Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel and in today's video, I'll give you a quick tour of the program that I use for budgeting, mint.com. This is the first of a three-part series on how I use mint. So I have been compulsively keeping a budget since I was in college. My parents made it a mission to spend as little money as possible when I was growing up, so I guess some of that must have rubbed off on me. I'm also someone who loves systems, tracking things, and data, so budgeting is a natural fit for me. Obviously, the technology has improved a lot in 25 years. My favorite software used to be Microsoft Money, but they phased that, that out years ago, which is when I switched over to Mint.com. Mint has some real advantages and some annoying drawbacks, but having tried many of the alternatives, I'm convinced it's the best thing out there at the moment for my needs. I have two separate videos where I share my likes and dislikes, but first, let me tell you why I need a tool like Mint. So I use Mint for budgeting. I don't use it to pay bills, I don't use it to keep track of my investments, and I don't use it to track or pay down debt. I only use it for monthly and annual budgeting. If you're looking for information on any of these other functions, you're not gonna find it here. For me, here's what Mint does in a nutshell. It takes all of the transactions from your checking and your savings accounts and all of your credit cards and it creates read-only connections which eat with each of these accounts. It then pulls in and consolidates all of your transactions into a single place. It allows you to categorize each transaction with a proper budget category. It allows you to create a budget and it does budget reporting by month or by a custom time interval. And it also allows you to export all of your transactions so that you can manipulate them outside of Mint in a spreadsheet. So let's go through each of these one at a time. First, Mint consolidates accounts. So I have a checking account and a money market account with my bank, a credit card that I use frequently, and a couple of other store credit cards like Target and Old Navy. I have online access to all of those accounts, meaning that I can log into the website for each of these and see all of my transactions. So Mint has you at the outset, choose your banking institution, enter your login credentials, and then it pulls all of the transactions in so that you can see them all in one place. Mint has a unidirectional relationship with these financial institutions. That means that it can pull info, but it can't make any changes. So that's sort of like having read access without being able to edit. It does make me slightly nervous to give my bank login information to Mint, but so far they've been really careful with that information. I'm in this case obviously choosing convenience over security here, but I understand why many people would be squeamish about doing that. If you have any problems connecting to your accounts, I have found customer service to be helpful as long as you don't mind using online chat. Mint also allows you to hide certain accounts. For example, my kids both have savings accounts that are hooked to my account at the bank. Since I don't want to see those transactions from those accounts, I'm able to hide them under account editing. So when you log into Mint, you'll start at the overview page, which is made up of a bunch of panels. Mint calls them cards. Um, there's the requisite advertising panel, but all of the others you can choose to hide by clicking on the gears icon and picking hide card. The accounts panel is on the left-hand side. So once all of your accounts are connected to Mint, you can click on any of the individual accounts to see only the transactions for that, that account. Clicking on an account will take you to the transactions page, and that's where you can choose all accounts where you can see all of your transactions together, which is what I normally do. So let's talk a little bit about transactions. So here's the info that Mint pulls in for each transaction, date, vendor, amount, and the account where the transaction happened. So you can change the vendor name for viewing without overriding the original data that was pulled in. I do this frequently since, for example, Mint lists the check number as the vendor name and I'd actually prefer to have the actual vendor name. So you can also change the date of the transaction. You can add a note. You can add tags to pull up certain kinds of transactions quickly. Also, Mint is going to try to attempt to assign a category based on some basic rules but you can change that default category. You can also split a transaction and apply multiple categories to one transaction. So what are categories used for? They are used for budgeting. So if you go into the budgets tab, Mint has put in some default budgets for you to get started. So this is not a video on budgeting. So perhaps at one point I'll do um, a video solely on setting up a budget later. 
let's just assume that you're coming into this process either with a budget or with a good idea of how to set one up. First, a weird thing about mints nomenclature. They refer to each of the line items that make up a budget as a budget. So when you create a budget, what you're really doing is setting up one line item in your overall budget, like $150 um, for gasoline for a month. So you can delete any of the budgets that Mint has already set up for you. For example, I don't need a separate alcohol and bars budget. So I go hover over it, I choose edit details, and select delete this budget. I can also make changes to the amount budgeted right from the main screen. I can change this $300 gas and fuel budget to $150. If you want to put a new bu a budget line item, you're going to choose create a budget and it is going to ask you for a category. So hitting the arrows to the right of the field shows you the categories and the subcategories that already exist by default. The good news is that you are not limited to the categories that already exist in Mint. You can add new ones. The bad news is that they don't allow you to delete any of their default categories. So that means that categorizing can be a little tedious with all the scrolling. So let's make a new category called Auto Other. This is gonna be a catch-all category for uh, car oil changes, toll fees, and other kind of car-related expenses. So I want this to be grouped in the Auto and Transport category. And then I'm gonna hit Add or Edit Categories. All the subcategories for Auto and Transport are listed here. So I'm gonna enter my new subcategory, and now it is listed here under Your Categories. So now that I have that, I choose how often the budget will be replenished. Usually every month is the best bet. And I'm gonna choose an amount um, to be in the budget. I'm gonna do $80. So now as I review my transactions for the month, I have to make sure that each transaction is assigned a category that also has a budgeted line item for reporting purposes. You can view, view your budget for the month. The default view is the current month or you can choose a previous month or a range either by clicking the link for this year or all time, or you can drag your cursor over your preferred time frame. For example, doing this is gonna show me the last three months. So Mint has a great feature that shows you all of the transactions that have been categorized with anything that is outside of your current budget. So every transaction has to have a category. Mint won't save it unless it has something in that field. If you scroll down to the bottom of the budget page, you'll see something called everything else. And clicking on any of the categories under that um, will bring you to a list of the transactions that make up that total. And you can recategorize those transactions right from this page. From the budget view, you can see how much you have budgeted for income and how much you have budgeted to spend. You can also see a total of how much income you actually brought in and how much you've actually spent. Plus a nice color-coded reminder of how you're doing on each line item. Green means that you're still under, yellow is right on track, and red is overspent. Gray just means the total transactions is zero so far. So this is pretty good, but it doesn't give me quite the reporting flexibility that I want. So one of my very favorite features is Mint's ability to export. If you go to the transactions page and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see in tiny letters a link that says export all transactions. So there are no additional export options. You can either export everything or not. My actual Mint account has over 10,000 transactions since I've been using it since 2012. Even so, all of those transactions don't take too long nor too much space to export. Then I can pull them into a spreadsheet, delete all the transactions that I don't need, and analyze and manipulate the data to my heart's content. I always export data from the previous year in January so that I have it saved. This export option is available on all the transaction page and uh, for any search that you run. For example, I can search for groceries and all my transactions come up within that category. Now I scroll down and I can just export those transactions. So that is my quick spin around Mint. In the next two videos, I'll tell you what I like about Mint and the things I really wish I could change. Comments are always appreciated and thanks for watching.